All right, what's going on everybody at Investor Thrive Nation? I got one of my students, Bryson, on here. And guys, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about you know, how to analyze deals. I got a deal that he's looking at uh, that he's, he asked me about, so we're gonna analyze that one. And then I have one that I actually gonna show him and you guys um, you know, how to break it down and see if it's a deal. It's a deal that Jerry Norton sent me. Me and Jerry do deals occasionally together. And uh, basically just gonna break down the numbers. And I'm, Bryce, Bryson, you're right here. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. So. You know, let's get it. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's go for it. So you sent me this deal um, the, the other day. To kind of tell me a little bit about it. I, I looked at the pictures and it looked like it was, it needed some work, but uh, kind of give me the situation on it. Like what's, what was it about? So yeah, I, I did find it on Redfin. I was, uh, I was going through uh, some applications and looking for some deals and I just signed up with Batch Leads. But um, Redfin, Sweet. I believe it was uh, uh, somebody was telling me that I could find some really good deals on there that uh, with potential flips and things like that. So I decided to go check it out. And I found this online and it looks like I, I, I even ran it through batch leads and everything just to see a little bit more about it. But it looks like it would be a good potential rental property. In fact, the person who owns it right now is also a rental. Mm, okay. So let me ask you a quick question. So how did you find this one? Were you just looking, is this listed on the MLS right now or? Um, I believe it is listed on MLS right now. It is. Yeah. It's active right now. Cool. Cool. So have you made an offer to the agent, um, yet on it? I have not. So like with my lack of experience, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to reach out to them and how to form that deal. And that's cool. something I be able to me maybe walk me through and kind of show me what I would do. A hundred percent, bro. Let's do it. You ready? Yeah. So this is active. It looks like it's been on the MLS for two days, but you haven't reached out, correct? I have not reached out yet. No. Reached out to him. Okay. And you said you found this on Batch. Uh, yes. Sweet. Awesome. That's that's awesome. So the first thing we want to find out is what is this house worth? What could we sell this house for if you know we repaired it, right? So we got to run some comps. I'm gonna run some comps first in Batch. And, um, you know, since the, we're, Utah's non-disclosure, it, it does get a little difficult running comps in, in, in batch or in pretty much any place if you don't have the MLS, but let's give it a shot. So this house is currently active. We're going to go to comparables. It's a, um, it says 1,160 square feet, but we know most of the houses in, in Utah have basements. So it's probably about 2,000. 400 square feet. So there are a couple of sold in the area. I kind of want to see actives. Uh, it doesn't look like according to this, there's that many actives around it. This one looks like it's pending. Um, 490. It's pending at 490. This one is about the same square footage. It looks like instead of a, a Rambler, it says it's pending and it was listed at um, 490. Okay. So that's interesting because ours is at 450. So we'd have to see some pictures to see if this one is um, updated. Let's see what else is out there. It's kind of hard to use like sold data, like I was telling you, um, because you know the interest rates have uh, risen since you know a couple months, like six months ago. So it's really hard to use old data. So I'm starting just just by looking at this. It looks like um, our prospect property that we're looking at is listed at 460, and the ones here. I mean, I'm seeing the highest sold property is four is 509, right? So there, and this is 465, and it looks like almost uh, the same kind of Rambler look. Let's see this one. Do you kind of see what I'm doing? I'm just trying to see, like, gauge what a fixed up property in this area would go for. Yeah. Let's look at this one. So this might be a good comp for us. If it was flipped, but I don't think it's flipped. It's it's just being sold as as is. I mean, it's not it's not terrible. It's just not nice, right? Yeah, definitely a little bit more updated than the one we're looking at. This is a good option. This is 988 square feet. Ours is just a tad bit bigger. That one's um, listed at 465 though, and ours is isn't ours at that price too? Yeah, uh, ours is pretty much listed for around that too. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. So it's like, why would I buy this? this piece of trash if i can buy this one you know for this pretty much the same amount i think they're asking a little too much on the one that you know we're looking at i i believe so as well i like looking at batch first but i also uh like like checking zillow out too so check this out so we have 485 this one is for sale three bedroom two bath it's a little it's different than ours and it's really updated right so this is a flip right 
and they're selling it for 485. And that looks a lot, a lot nicer. Our, ours is technically a little bit bigger than this one because it's got that the basement. Uh, I don't think it doesn't look like this one it has a basement. It all looks like upper level, but it's nice, right? So for them to think they're going to get 465 when this is 485 and this has been on the market for 14 days, I think they're smoke. They're smoking something, you know? Yeah. And sure. then look at this. Look at this one. 550. And this is a new construction. They're asking for 465 and you can get a new construction, brand new house for 550, right? Like you ain't, you ain't doing that for the that other one. Man, I don't even think the ARV now after looking at this, it, I think at max it's 500,000 on that house, max. Like if you did a really good job, right? Yeah. So quick question. Uh, when uh, you go to uh, batch leads, on when it clicks up the estimated value, would you say that's pretty accurate? No, the reason why it's not a hundred like accurate is because we're in a non-disclosure state. So okay. it's not able to really pull, this is basically an algorithm and it takes the data of like what houses have sold for. And the issue with like, you know, non-disclosure states is they don't give the, all the data out. So their batch is trying its best to calculate an estimated value. But this is, it's not always accurate. If it's in a different state like Florida, you know, a, a state that actually discloses information, there's eight non-disclosure states in the, uh, in the United States, I think, eight or 11. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we live in one of them, right? So yeah. it, unless you have MLS data, it's hard to really determine what properties have sold for. You can see what they're selling for, but you can't see what someone actually paid for it. So that's why this isn't as accurate in Utah. So what, what I would do is... I would call this agent and make an offer on the property according to the numbers I run. So uh, 500,000 and uh, they're asking for 465. So let's run through the numbers, Bryson. So if we buy this house at 465, we get a hard money loan and uh, it takes us five months to flip it. We have to pay commissions and fees on that. And this house, it's 2,000 square feet. So it, I think it's going to need a medium rehab. I mean, everything's outdated. So 2,200 square feet, you put this medium rehab. It's going to take 52000 according to this, $52,000 to rehab it, right? So if you want to wholesale this to somebody and make fifteen k, if they buy it from you, if you get it at four sixty five, you put your fifteen k wholesale fee. So it's at four, what is that? Uh, 10, 480, <laughs> you wholesale to someone for 480, they would lose $99,000. This is not a deal for anyone at this price. The only way this is a deal is, I mean, even at 350, you're only making like 22K. And that's a that's a big price to pay to make 22K. You gotta be like around three, like 325. So what what these people are doing is they're, they're hoping and praying that someone will pay, that like wants to live in it themselves, will buy it and then work on it as they go. That's not like trying to make money because this, there's no money to make in this deal. So let's call the agent, Kurt Zimmerman. You think he, you think he's going to give me a hard time when I offer him 325? Well, I guess we'll find out. Let's do it. Let's, let's call him, man. Let's see how you work. I bet he won't answer. Agents don't answer after like 10 o'clock. <laughs> they barely answer. Let's give him a shot. By the way, you just have to um, take this part and search it. And they usually has their number. Don't ever call this or schedule a tour or do anything like that. Hi, this is Kirk. Kirk, how you doing? This is Nathan. I'm calling about your listing. Sure. Yeah, Kirk, are you uh do you have a couple minutes to chat or to catch it about time? Yeah, I'm walking down the mall. <laughs> nice, nice. And we'll get ready for the weekend, huh? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, hey, I'm I'm calling about your property because I mean I'm I'm looking just like everybody else, looking for a property to, you know, a good opportunity for a house to flip. This one seems a little outdated. <laughs> Um, do you, do you feel like, uh, I'm just going to be straight up cause I don't want to waste your time. Do you feel like this is a, would be a good project, uh, to work on? Well, I do. I mean, yeah, if you look at the description, I think it'd be easy to put a mother-in-law apartment down there and have a separate entrance, I think. But... Well, that's, that's, yeah, I meant you, it's all about cash flow, right? Either cash flow or you flip it. Um, but I, I'm kind of curious. I was looking, it looks pretty outdated. I was looking at some comps in the area. I'm really getting like ARV or like, or what I feel like I could resell this thing if I flipped it. I'm, I'm thinking like half a million. Is that, is that, am I, am I correct or am I kind of way off? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming, you know, pretty well since you're, you're an agent. Yeah, you're right? pretty close. Yeah. yeah. So, so if, if I were to fix this thing up, I mean, honestly, for the, put a kitchen in the bathroom uh, in the, and sorry. In the oh, basement, well, that, now you're talking, now you're talking something else now. <laughs> now, I'm, now we're talking a big flip, right? It's going to be pretty. Now, expensive. now you're talking. Yeah. Now you're talking worth more money now that you've got a mother-in-law down there. Yeah. So, um, I would, I ran my numbers and I, I mean, I just want to be frank, like, my offer, I know it's listed at 460. Is that like, is the seller like 100% firm on that? I just feel like that's kind of high for the condition it's in and where I could resell it for. Yeah, what's your offer? I don't want to shock you, but I ran my numbers on this before I called you. In order for me to make, you know, a good amount of money where I feel like it would be a good flip for me, 
I would probably want to offer between like three, three twenty five and three thirty cash. Yeah, you're a hundred thousand low under our other offer. Wow, you already have an currently. offer. You already have an offer at four sixty. Yeah, cash. Wow, someone offered four- not at four sixty. Not at four sixty. Oh, you got it. Okay, you got it. Didn't didn't you say that you were? At three thirty five, three twenty five, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying you got? Yeah, we're a hundred. We're about a hundred over that. Okay, so there's a cash offer on the table already at four twenty five. Well, I'm not going to tell you the price, but it's pretty close to that. Of course. Okay, let me put the numbers in at four twenty five. Let me see what I'd make. I, it's all math. Do you want me to? You want to call me back when you get done talking? I mean, get done figuring. No, I, I just have it right in front of me right here. So I just put four twenty five. I put a rehab estimate of like. 50k to get it up to half a million but um you know that might be aggressive um no, I, you don't need to teach me anything here well, no worries man good yeah, to talk to you yeah it was good talking you have a great weekend all right bye-bye all right bryson <laughs> that, <laughs> that, is not that was it hey i i did you're not making money on that property at 425 like it's not it's not possible right yeah but and by the way that call wasn't like amazing i was uh i've done better but I just wanted to knock it out, right? Yeah. They're, they're already listed too high. He has a cash offer of 425. He, they haven't accepted it, obviously. So that's where you can get yourself in trouble is like trying to make a deal work when obviously they're just banking and hoping that they can sell it to someone who is, um, what's it called? Like someone that's just going to live in it, right? Yeah. Or so, someone, that- someone that's can live in it and fix it up or, or maybe even at renting it, you might be like, well, what if they rent it? Let's run those numbers. So if you go here and you type in, you buy this house for, um, 465, like they asked for at 6% interest. Cause that's usually, I think that's what the interest rate is. Let's just say it's five. So if you can rent it out for, what is this saying? Four, $2,468 and your mortgage payment is 2,497. You ain't cash flowing, right? You ain't making any money. So it's not a rental. It's not really an Airbnb because it's trash. You'd have to fix it up. You'd have to put money into it. Either way, you'd have to put money into it or if you rent it. The, the thing is, I'm in your position. We're all in the position. We want a deal. So sometimes we try to, you know, squeeze something like, you know, manipulate our numbers and say, well, maybe it doesn't need that much work. It, it needs a lot of work. It's super old. It probably even needs more than 50K in order to get it to the top level. And um, it's not worth that much. So anyway, people in, in Utah, like on market, they once it hits the MLS, the agents are involved. They're trying to get as much as they want. You know, the it gets maximum exposure. So getting a deal on the MLS is possible, but it's difficult. That's why I batch is legit. When you can set, you can do off market, you can talk to people before they put on the MLS through texting, cold calling. You know, um, hitting up people on you know vacant lists where there's actual motivation. Notice the default rentals. Um, stuff like that. Vacancies. I've already said that, but best way that you that you I think you're breaking up, but I'm catching what you're saying. What's the best way we use Batch? You're just saying what's the workflow? How do we use Batch to to get off market deals? Like, do you text them? Do you cold call them? What list do you pull? I mean, those are the generic questions that everyone has. And this this call, I'm about. I, I think this, we can, we can knock that out next week when we talk about off market with me and you. All right, man. Well, you have a great, um, great weekend and uh, batch, um, uh, investor nation. We'll catch you later.